2017 Ram 1500 Bighorn front and rear front brakes. You need to jack the vehicle up and support it properly with some jack stands. You can remove your tires. This has got the swelled up lug nuts, which is a 7 8. So you take the lug nuts off of the 7 8 socket, get the tire off. Then you'll need a 13 millimeter to remove the caliper bolts to the brackets. You get a 13 here and a 13 down here. And then the uh, caliper bracket bolts are on the back side. There's two of them, one here and one down below. And those are a 21 millimeter. So what we'll do, we'll get started. What you want to do is you want to get a uh, large screwdriver, get it between here and the caliper, try the caliper up, get it off. Sometimes you might have to go inside like that, find the slot in the rotor and pry on it to help push the pistons in a little bit to get the caliper off because sometimes there's a little tab on the back of the brake pa brake pad that chip the uh, these plastic pistons. So sometimes you might want to pry them out, kind of like that. Stick it in there. Pry on the caliper. Push the piston in. And then when you want to remove the caliper, you stick the pry bar in there like that screwdriver, and you got your bolts out. Get the caliper off. Take the caliper when you get it off and push it over here to the side. So it's not in your way of getting into your caliper bracket bolts, which are a 21 in the back. You might have to use a big breaker bar, cheater bar, to break them loose before you can use a little ratchet. Here's what the bolts look like. There's two of them. Use your caliper bracket. Brake pads in it. Next, we're going to take the rotor off. Some manufacturers use the screws. This one, particular one, uses the little clips. So, you're going to end up breaking them, taking them off. So, oh well. Those are just down there to keep the rotors from falling off at the factory. Well, the rotor is frozen to the hub. With the rust, what you want to do is you want to hit around there, and there, and there, and there, and there. Hit them pretty good. And if you're going to replace the rotor for sure, then you can hit the, the surface. But most of the time, on that surface. So then you want to spray some penetrant around a little bit, let it soak for a little bit, and then come back and hit them pretty good. Try not to hit your studs. Okay, that surface has to be clean. It's a step. This is higher than here. This is the main right area of the rotor from here and here. So this has to be clean. It's pretty decent, pretty shiny. This has got a little light film of rust on it, so you need to clean it off. And right here, it's even thicker. It's higher. I can feel it that it's higher. It's bumpy. That all needs to be cleaned off nice and shiny. There it is. Pretty good. These are the things I use. I use a die grinder. Same things I use is a die grinder with a disc. I use a fairly cheap and hard freight. And you go drive it. You can pick these up too. Go online, buy these little discs. And now you have a small wire brush and a nice screwdriver. Nice new screwdriver. You clean inside here really good. Make sure they're nice and sharp. So then you'll put a small thin coat of anesthes on there and then that'll be ready. And then we're gonna work on our copper bracket. I'll show you that. Okay. Sometimes you have to hammer the pads out because they're frozen in there because of the rust buildup where the slides are for the pads. You know that? You gotta clean that up too. Get it nice and shiny, just like your your hubs. Okay. And also, 
Got to take these off, make sure they're not frozen. Take them out, clean them up, put some Silglide in there or some uh, dialetic grease, okay? Okay, I got them cleaned up. All right. I just use my angle die grinder with my sandpaper disc on there. Just scratching them. I'm not actually moving any metal. I'm just scratching them. Okay. And then I'm gonna paint them. Uh, and then I'm gonna put my silk glide inside of my uh, slide bolts. And I'll let the paint dry. Check my pins out. Clean them up. I'm so glad I let it grease to put it on there. Make sure you put some up on there so it gets onto the little seal there. Okay? And you put them in there. Turn them as you're going in so you don't just wipe them off as you go because there's, there's little grooves on the sides. If you keep tur twisting it, that'll keep them filled with the grease. Okay? And then hold it on there. Painted. I'll let it dry. I think these are the ones you put a little bit of put a little bit of dye, silk glide, add that grease on there. When the paint is dry, then allow the pad to slide in there because it's that type of pad to have. See that type? Slides on that surface. And if they get stuck on the bracket and frozen in there with rust, then they won't be able to slide back and forth and give you a good uh, brake operation. This is the main key to a good brake job is your cleanup of your slides, your pins, make sure they're not frozen, and the back side of your, on your, on your hubs, inside your rotor there. You get all these nicely cleaned up, you're gonna have a good brake job. Okay, here's your new rotor. They got a light film of oil all over them just so they don't rust when they're coming over from Japan or China. <laughs> so what you wanna do, you wanna spray them off with Windex, degreaser. Do not use brake clean, brake clean will eventually eat away your brake pads. The brake pads do not like brake clean. So do not use brake clean. Use Windex, water, or a degreaser to clean your rotors before you put them on, okay? You see the three leaf flower there? That means you do not use brake clean because they're made out of a new material that the brake clean will eat away at it. Put a little film of silk glide in there. Not a lot, just a little bit. I'm gonna put my bracket back on. Okay, light film of dilated grease. Not dilated grease. Light film of anesthesia in the back. Not a lot, just a light film. Put my rotor on. I use a small pair of vice grips slightly on there to keep it from getting crooked on me. Put my bracket back on. Start my uh, bracket bolts, snug them up, and then I'll, I'll torque them to 80 foot pounds. Uh, you should look up the torque yourself, make sure that I'm right. Torque those, and I'll get my brake pads. I put those in. And then we need to get our C clamp, put it in there. push our pads, our pistons back in. So we'll get a C-clamp, put it on there, and we'll tighten them in. Use my C-clamp with my pad. It equally pushes them in there. I have them in, so now that'll be good. When you get this done, clean it up inside there with some uh, degreaser. Get some of that dust out of there and, and put your caliper I'm gonna get your pistons in there. I mean, uh, your brake pads. You can use their uh, grease on your caliper uh, pad mounts also. I don't ever use it because it's just easier to use my show glide. So, if 
but anyway. So, got your clips on, your pads. Make sure they're all pointing up when your pad is facing down. If you have the other way around, your pad will be held up. And you'll definitely notice that they're not on properly. So, and then we'll put the pads in there. Then we'll put our caliper on. Okay, see how the pads are on there? I'll push out. Okay, the little springs. Okay, a little big spring there, okay. All right, then you wanna hold them together and then you wanna put your caliper on in the bottom, kind of like slide it in there. Make sure you push your slide pins in so you can get it past the caliper when it comes up, okay? Okay, caliper's on. Went on nice. Put my bolts in for my caliper. Snug them up and I tighten them up to 18 foot pounds. You should look up the spec yourself. If I'm wrong, make sure the line is not twisted. Make sure it comes in there nicely. In fact, not like going like that, you know? If you got it like that, then you got the caliper twisted. So make sure the line is properly routed. Make sure you get your ABS wire there and it's a little retainer. It all looks good. Pick up my vice grips. Now you're ready for the tire. And these uh, tires, I think they torque to like 140 foot pounds. And again, you should look it up. Okay, so that's how you do the front brakes. Hey, I forgot to add in there. If, when you're removing your caliper bolts, these little ones, and they just keep on spinning and spinning, you gotta hold the slide pin. And you can hold the slide pin, and you can remove the bolt. It's a pretty tight fit. You can't really get a good wrench in there. So uh, needle nose, vice grips work perfect. Okay, so I meant to put that in there and I forgot, sorry.